Come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved, for God so loved the world that He gave us. His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live. service here at Broadmoor. If this is your first time joining us, we hope you felt the warmest welcome. I want to say good morning to those joining us at home. We're going to continue to worship today. I want to invite you to say good morning to your neighbor, and we're going to continue to sing. Amen. Moses, 
the one who opened up the oceans. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages, I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. I'm calling on the God of man. Whose favor rests upon the lonely. I know with you all things are possible. I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. I may not face good life, but I've got my own shots. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How oh, I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing on your feet. Standing on your faithfulness, on your faithfulness. You hurt your children, then you hear your children. You are the same God, you are the same God. You answered prayers back then, and you will answer now. You are the same God, you are the same God. You were providing then, you are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You moved in power then. God moved in power now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are a healer then. You are a healer now. Oh, yeah. 
seated. Everyone, a welcome to Broadmoor United Methodist Church. My name is Donnie Wilkinson. I'm one of the pastors here. We're so grateful that you are with us this morning. A couple of real quick announcements about things that are coming up. One of the things I love about our church is that we invest in our young people's future, and one of the ways that we do that is through our endowment scholarships. The scholarships uh, applications are now open and available. You can find them online, go to the church website, click on the link. Uh, they'll be receiving the applications all this month and then first part of May, the endowment committee will get together and make a determination about allocating those uh, scholars uh, scholarships. They're available to graduating uh, youth uh, or to people who have come through our, or who are members of our church who are currently enrolled in college or are going to seminary and so you can uh, apply for those, and uh, it'll take take a little bit off the uh, off the tuition bill for you. So that'll be that'll be a great way, and it's a way that many people through the years have given to this. Uh, and these are the gifts of people who have now part of the church triumph, but still making an impact here on earth. And if you'd like to know how you can uh, make a gift to the endowment committee, let me know, and I'll get that information in, information to you so that you can be a part of investing in our young people's future as well. Next Sunday, I'm really excited about this. It's going to be our, our Beats and Bites uh, gathering. It's going to be outside in the church parking lot. And our fabulous band here is going to be playing all sorts of music. She hates it when I put her on the spot. But what, what, are you, what song are you most looking forward to singing next week? A surprise. Surprise, okay. Yeah. Good. No. Great answer. Hint, though. Yeah. I do like country. Do like right. country, all right. So, so it's going to be just all sorts of great, great music uh, from uh, from the cross uh, cross genres across the ages, across uh, the decades. And so, come and be a part of that. It's going to be food trucks. Uh, there'll be the band. You can uh, there'll be a little small uh, mission market where you can uh, purchase little items. Uh, Red stick together. We'll be selling soft drinks and waters to to go to help support those ministries. And this is just a time for us to come together and have fun to meet our neighbors and uh, to come and be a part uh, of that. So here's the thing I need you to do. One, figure out who you're gonna to invite to come be a part of this next Sunday. Uh, tell them you'll come pick them up or meet you here and do that. And then also pray that we have weather just like we had yesterday. Because yesterday was perfect. We need that again next, next Sunday. All right, so I hope that y'all come and make plans of being a part of that. At this time, I'd like to invite all the kids who would like to be a part of Kids Breakout. They can go back and see, see our friends here in the back, age five through fifth grade. They can go be a part of Kids Breakout. And as they are making their way there, let us come into a time of prayer. So I invite you to turn your palms up in your lap. Close your eyes. Breathe slowly. Allow your scattered senses to be centered on the presence of God who is with us in this moment and who invites us to come into prayer. I invite you to begin this time of prayer by giving thanks to God for three specific blessings that you are conscious of and grateful for today. I invite you now to pray for three people that you know, three people whom you feel need a little extra measure of God's grace and love in their life. Ask God to bless them, to fill them with hope and strength and courage and peace. I 
invite you to allow the Holy Spirit to help you review the past 24 hours and to ask for forgiveness for specific mistakes or sins, places where you missed the mark, and ask for the strength to forgive others. I invite you to pray for one person that you have a hard time getting along with. Ask God to give them insight into the nature of their personal problems and to give you the strength to let God's love flow through you to them. I invite you to ask God to give you sensitivity to the needs of one person that you can show God's love to in word or deed today. I invite you to ask God for help with your personal problems. I invite you to ask God for help in making progress toward your goals, to see the next faithful step, and to have the courage to take it. I invite you now to ask God this question and to listen with all that you have for God's reply. Lord, what do you want to do through me? Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for this time of prayer and for this opportunity to lift our hearts to you. Receive our prayers, for we offer them to you in the name of your Son, Jesus, and together the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Just a few moments, we're going to continue with our worship through the giving of our tithes, gifts, and offerings. As you uh, prepare for that, I'd like to invite those who are assisting uh, with the offering this morning, if they will, to, to make their way forward. And I want to say a word of appreciation to everyone who helped uh, with the garage sale. Yesterday, this uh, space was filled with all sorts of incredible treats and treasures, stuff I didn't even know we needed uh, we, until we saw it and we brought it, we brought it home. Uh, but uh, thank you to everyone who was a part of that. If you volunteered in any way, uh, donating items, moving stuff, working on the sale itself. Would you just raise a hand uh, there? Look around, everybody who was a part of that. Thank you all so much for all of your help, all of your support. Um, Next Sunday, we're going to be sharing with you the total that was raised, and then all of those funds will be going out to support various missions in our church and around, around the community and around the world. But this time, let us pray. Gracious God, receive now these, our tithes, gifts, and offerings. Bless and multiply them, for we give them in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.
So Francis Broad was an English painter, uh, late 1800s, first part of the 1900s. His older brother, when his older brother passed away, left Francis three things. Um, it left him a little Jack Russell Terrier named Nipper, left him a, a gramophone, you know, as an old-fashioned record player with the big speaker uh, on it, and they would do that, and he left him some uh, records that his brother actually had recorded where he was, brother was reading passages of scripture, and Francis noticed that whenever he would play these records with his brother's voice, Nipper's ears would, would perk up, and he'd kind of cock his head, and he would look into the, the speaker of the gramophone. As he was looking for his master, he could hear his master's voice, but he couldn't see him. And, and eventually that little pattern of the dog looking into the gramophone became Broad's most famous painting, which you've seen or a representation of before. Here, here it is. Y'all seen that? As we enter into the season of Easter, we're looking today at uh, something that, that very similar to this. Even though we don't physically see Jesus, we can still hear his voice. We can still listen to his words, and he can still give guidance to our lives. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, about how we can learn to more effectively hear Jesus' voice each and every day, not just a once in a while, but make it a practice of listening intentionally for his voice each and every day so that you can hear what he wants to say, say to you. And we do this uh, so that we can continue to discover what does it mean to be people who actually walk as Jesus walked. I saw a, a, another study came out uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, over the last 20 years, over 40 million people have uh, stopped participating in churches regularly. And you want to know what the number one reason that is given? It's not so that they can just go indulge their most lascivious fantasies without guilt. The number one reason people give for why they have no interest in being a part of a church is the gap that they see between people who say they believe in Jesus and how they actually treat other people. I love that song that, that, that we, they just sang. It's, it, that's, that's a beautiful summation of the my theology, we are to live Christ and to love Christ and to serve Christ. And we do that by serving each person that we meet with, with kindness and with compassion and with generosity and with love. We, we, we come to Scripture so that we can discover what does it mean for us to become more and more like Jesus. 
That's what the Christian journey is all about. You, as beautiful and as flawed and as, in, as filled with incredible gifts and uh, troubling habits, you, the promise God wants to work in and through you is that you can become more and more like, like Jesus. And uh, Jesus wants us to, to give us personalized guidance each and every day so that we can continue on our journey to becoming more and more like him, a person of love and compassion and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control each and every day. Um, and we do that as we learn to listen for, listen for his voice. Reminded of that verse from John 10, 27. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice I know them, and they follow me. We can learn, to actually learn to hear God's voice each and every day. And the primary way that we do that is through, uh, through this book, through the Holy Scriptures. And, and there's a verse, a scripture passage that we're going to look at today from Paul's letter to Timothy, second letter to Timothy, that gives us some insight, teaches us something about what Scripture actually is and how, how God uses it. And then we're going to explore a very simple spiritual practice that I hope you will make a part of your daily life. Because as you do this practice, you will learn to hear his voice. Your ears will prick up just like nippers did when they heard his master's voice, when you hear our good shepherd's voice. And he says that we as his people can learn to hear his voice. So it comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse, verses 14 through 17. So uh, Timothy, the letters to Timothy are a little bit different than the other books that we have been letters we've been reading so far this year. All the letters that we've read thus far have been to whole communities of people. First and second, Timothy are Paul's letters to an individual, to a young man named Timothy who was uh, a pastor of a very troubled church in Ephesus. They had all sorts of troubles. They had infighting. They had bad teaching. They had people uh, acting out, all sorts of stuff. And Paul sent Timothy to Ephesus to try to help them get, get everything back going and becoming people who are becoming more and more like Jesus. And as a part of his second letter to Timothy, Paul wrote these words, As for you, Timothy, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from who you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, what are the sacred writings? Well, that's what we call today the, the Old Testament. It's uh, uh, books of uh, Genesis all the way through, through Malachi. The first two-thirds of, of this book are what we call the Old Testament. And even though there are, uh, there are dozens and dozens of books uh, in it, there are lots of different characters and d hundreds of different storylines. They all are telling the same story. They're all a part of one unified story of a God who created the universe and loves his creation so much that he's setting out to redeem it. And all of these different threads of the Old Testament, they tell a unified story that point to Jesus, whom Paul says, we have now experienced his presence, we've experienced his life, and now we're aligning our lives uh, up with, with what we see in him. The Old Testament is a unified story pointing to Jesus. And Paul reminds Timothy to remember the sacred stories, the sacred writings that he had been raised in. All scripture, he continues, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and training in righteousness so that the person of God may be proficient and equipped for every good work. He says all scripture is inspired by God. The word that's translated inspired is here on the screen for you now. It's theonustos. 
theonustos. Um, it's a compound word, theo, meaning God, and nustos, breathe. Same word to describe already. God, God's spirit is the one that uh, inspired and, 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 and brought the sacred writings into being. God worked through the ancient authors as they, as they collected the stories and as they organized the stories and as they put them together in the way that we have them now, the way that very faithful to the way that Jesus uh, experienced the stories uh, as well. These stories are salvific in that they tell us a story of uh, the world, the universe in which we live, a story where it's not just happenstance. It's a story of a world that is created by an all-powerful God who loves us and wants to rescue us and to rescue all of his creation so that life can flourish to the full. These scriptures are inspired by God and they do four things. Did you get to see the four things that Paul listed there? They, they teach us. They teach us things that we didn't know. Tell us about uh, how God is. Tell us stuff about ourselves. Give us a true picture of who, who we are. They uh, reprove us. Reprove is when we realize, uh, well, we're not quite living the way that we ought to live. They teach us the way to live. They show us when we're living out of alignment with God's plan and purpose. Uh, they, they correct us. That word that's translated as corrected means to straighten out. Like my arm is bent right now, straightened uh, out. Every one of us has parts in our lives that are out of alignment with God's, with God's plan and purpose where we don't live with love and capacity, uh, compassion and generosity towards others. And, and the scripture helps us to to get ourselves straight, to live in alignment with God's purposes, and then to train us in righteousness, to teach us how to live in right relationship with God and right relationship with other people. I love how Eugene Peterson translates this, uh, this past, makes it even a little bit more, more simple to understand. He puts it this way, every part of scripture is God-breathed and useful in one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. All scripture inspired by God. Now, I don't know about you, but there are times when I come across passages of scripture where I go, yes, that absolutely. Love your neighbor. That's a beautiful, inspired part passage of scripture. And then there are passages like, uh, like Psalm 139, let me find it real quick. Psalm 139, where, where it, says, it says this. I hate them with a perfect hatred. Now, there's a time when I wondered about the truthfulness of that passage until we've been battling with the insurance companies over the last four years. And I can tell you that scripture is true. I do indeed hate them with a perfect hatred. All right. But see, what, what's funny, what, what's funny is the very, very next verse in Psalm 139 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now, it, it's perfectly understandable when, when you're battling with an insurance company over trying to get a just compensation for the fire that we had to get, to get frustrated and to become angry and to become uh, even, even borderline. But, but, you know, to, to, God says to, 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 to search our hearts to make sure that they're not becoming hardened to make sure that while we may be frustrated in a moment, we're not becoming a person of hatred. We disapprove of what is being done, but we don't hate the people. See, that's how scripture works. It, it identifies something about, about ourselves. We see ourselves a little bit more clearly and then we see wherever there's a gap between our lives and what God wants 
for us. And now the temptation, the temptation uh, is to read this book and to use it as a magnifying glass to look at everybody else's faults and mistakes. But the way that God wants us to use Scripture, the, the holistic, healing, life-giving way of reading Scripture is to read it as a mirror so that we're looking at ourselves and not just a regular mirror, but, you know, those magnifying mirrors with the fluorescent light around it that magnifies every pore and pimple and everything. So you can see everything in detail. That's what Scripture does for us. It helps us to see ourselves clearly and then it helps us to see that even though we are flawed and broken and messed up God still loves us and God wants to bring healing and hope into our life and when we read scripture in this way it truly becomes life-giving for us uh, John Wesley when he was writing about uh, his commentary on uh, this verse from 2 Timothy, he wrote this, The Spirit of God not only once inspired those who wrote it, but continually inspires, supernaturally assist those that read it with earnest prayer. And that's the key to reading Scripture and hearing Jesus' voice, to come with earnest prayer, being willing to listen for God's Word to you this day. And there's an ancient spiritual practice that we're going to talk about that I'm going to describe to you, and then we're actually going to practice together in a few moments that I have found life-giving. It, it's one that helps me to, to put myself in a position to where I can hear from God day after day. And it's called Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina is a, a spiritual practice. Uh, don't let the, the Latin terms fool you. It just means holy reading, reading sacred scripture in a way. And it has four four basic movements. You read, you meditate, you pray, and then contemplate. Now we'll go through each of these here in turn in just, just a few moments, but it begins with the attitude that we bring into reading. And, and it must be an attitude of faith and trust, uh, looking for a personal encounter with Jesus, a coming faith uh, that this is the revealed word of God, that God did, did indeed inspire these words. And these are the words that God wants to use to connect with us and to, and to, uh, and to speak to us today. That these are words are alive and, and active, and we have to have a desire to receive whatever it is that God wants to say to us. And when we come with that sort of attitude, that sort of thing, I can promise you, I can promise you that you will hear a word for your life each day. So it begins by, Alexio Divina begins by first reading uh, the scripture, but not just reading it like you read the newspaper, reading it slowly, preferably out loud so that you actually hear the word, slow down and reflect on it as as you read, what's going on in this story? Who are the characters? What's happening in it? And then you read it uh, again, but this time in a meditative uh, sense. Read the passage again, noticing and naming a word or a phrase that stands out to you. When I was a kid, I did a lot of uh, cane pole fishing. Uh, you know, you take the line and you put the bobber on the end and you bait the hook and you throw it out in the water. And then what do you do? You wait until, until, the, until the bobber does what? Until it boinks, right? When, it, when the bobber goes up and down, if you put that, that picture up, uh, if you let the bobber go up and down, it lets you know that there's a fish there. And when we come to Scripture in this way, we're looking for just a word or just a phrase that, that boinks, that, that, that bounces, that, that comes alive to us. That's the word that God wants to use to speak to you this day. And, and it could be anything, any part of that, but whatever word stands out you want to, to pay attention to and to, to move into the next portion of the practice, which is prayer. Read that passage a third time and allow the words or the phrases of the text to lead you into prayer. 
whatever word stood out to you. Maybe it was hope, or maybe it was repent, or maybe, maybe it was, what are you looking for? Whatever the word is, let that word lead you into prayer. And then finally, the last time is to, to contemplate and to read it uh, and asking the question, what's the one thing from this passage that I want to take into my life this day? So read, pray, uh, read, meditate, pray, and then contemplate. Those are the four, four moves of, of the scripture of Lectio Divina. And then rather than, rather than talk about it more, we're going to actually practice it this morning, okay? So uh, here's what I'm going to invite you to do. To come into a comfortable position. And I, I'm going to read, read a, a verse, a passage of scripture here from John chapter 14. And while we're not going to have time to do all the, all the different readings of it, I'm going to read it very slowly. And I'm inviting you just to listen to what is the word or phrase that, that Jesus says in this line that stands out to you. And then to take a few moments to let that lead you into prayer. Okay, so this is the passage. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. What was the word that stood out to you? How can that word lead you in to prayer? In just a few moments, we're going to come to the Lord's table. And you're going to be invited to receive the bread and cup. And then I hope that you will take whatever word that you have received and that you will prayerfully reflect upon it. Maybe you want to spend some time in prayer at the altar rails or a light a candle as an odds and sign or symbol of your prayer. Or just return to your seat and, and reflect on it. But this practice of coming, of coming to uh, Scripture like this each and every day, it has a profound transformative effect on us. Because what we do is we discover that, that Jesus actually is alive, that he speaks to us each and every day. If only we have ears to hear and a willingness to listen and to obey. Let me remind you of some more words that Jesus said. This is my body broken for you every time you eat from this bread remember me this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins every time you drink from this cup remember me Lord Jesus, we ask that once again you will pour out your spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us your body and blood so that we may be 
your people redeemed by your blood, bringing good news and hope and salvation into the world. Be with us now and be with all who are hungry and thirsty. For we pray in your holy name, joining in the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat>